What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So, yes, the other day, the Anheim Ducks did make a pretty big deal with one of their guys, Troy Terry, one of their bright young stars. They signed him to a nice seven-year deal. I think it's an extension on his rookie deal. But, yeah, he definitely deserved it. He's been one of the more consistent younger guys that they drafted in the first round. So, definitely well-deserved to be able to bring him back along with the team. Pretty sure they'll be doing that soon with a Trevor Zegris and all that in the near future. But yeah, either way, nice to be able to hold down one of the top younger talents in the NHL, especially for the Anaheim Ducks, because it always seems like they either lose them or trade them to something else and never really works out. But at least this one is working out so far. In 2024, USC commits the wide receiver Xavier Jordan. He did a pretty nice jump like up in around the 70s and like overall player rankings for the recruiting database a couple months ago but he did recently do another jump like another 20 some odd points so he's like now in the 50 area range which is pretty nice obviously he's was talented before but he's definitely pushing to be almost a low-end five star but i doubt it he'll just be a high-end four star for usc but yeah, it's definitely looking good. They definitely found a nice, bright local wide receiver, which is really cool. And then cornerback Dakota Fields, who's also in that 2024 recruiting class, recently went up to Oregon and had a, a visit up there. I don't know if it was official or unofficial, but he pretty much even told his recruiting guy at USC, Dante Williams, that, yeah, I know you might be worried or it sounds like you might be worried, but... Don't worry. Don't worry. It's you know he says he's still pretty much a hundred percent committed to USC. Just wanted to see what they were doing up there, or maybe willing to offer up at Oregon, coaching wise and stuff. But it does seem like he did still say that there's nothing to worry about after even after that visit. But I don't know because some other experts that cover the team have been saying that he could be on flip watch, which is that he might be end up choosing Oregon over USC but you never know it could be also that if he does end up doing that then USC has their eyes on somebody else so you never know but yeah either way it would be it would suck pretty much if <laughs> Oregon ends up getting them because I thought we were going to be leaving Oregon and of course some other big news happened pretty sure I'll be getting into that soon in this video but yeah it would hopefully he is correct and it's nothing too serious. An offensive lineman, an incoming offensive lineman, the freshman Tobias Raymond was recently another House of Victory signing for them, so that's pretty cool for them. They also did release a statement or some pictures and a video of one of their more recent partners with a dealership. I forget the name of the dealership, but it is a Mercedes-Benz dealership and the first athlete that they got in there to take pictures and all this stuff and promoting it promoting the deal was the number one women's high school player Juju Watkins who's going to be on campus soon so it's obvious that they wanted to get one of the bigger names on there and Caleb like I said isn't part of House of Victory that I can remember you know the reigning Heisman winner for football but to get the number probably a more talented more recognizable name in House of Victory right now and is the Juju Walkin. So overall, it's a pretty nice partnership is what it looks like. And yeah, nice to get some Mercedes Benz while they're on campus, a lot of those athletes. PFF is counting down the top 50 players playing in college football this fall. And of course, a couple of the top players that are on pretty much most of people's lists, even going into the NFL next season as well. Pretty much the two same guys obviously the safety Kalen Bullock he's at number 24 I believe and of course Caleb Williams the quarterback is at number one overall as the top 50 players in college football so yeah I was hoping to maybe see another one or two of the USC players in there but I guess they're, they are still too young and a little bit more unproven so we'll see Maybe Bear Alexander or even Anthony Lucas could get their names up in their that list next season. But yeah, definitely very excited to have those two guys on our roster. 
And as I was mentioning before, that I didn't expect USC to be playing Oregon any more time or having recruiting battles going down to the wire to where it would make a difference because they would be playing each other. But now it looks like they might because the past couple days it seemed like both Oregon and Washington were going to be going to the Big Ten. But it pretty much was... They kept saying that they would accept the invitation if the Big Ten did invite them or something like that to join the conference. So there was never really anything official. So then yesterday and this morning, it kind of died down. But then all of a sudden, I guess after they had their meeting with the Pac-12 Board of Regents or whatever they called it, it's because everyone was supposed to try to get all the rest of the Pac-12 teams to sign up for that Apple TV deal, the streaming deal that the Pac-12 was going to supposedly have. Apparently, they didn't like it, and then the Big Ten calls in and kind of pretty much made an offer to both Oregon and Washington, which is kind of weird because you thought they would be a package deal with also Oregon State and Washington State, but those two might be left on their own to either stay in the Pac-12 or maybe the Pac-12 and Mountain West join a big conference together. They're probably going to have to because I don't know if they're going to get picked up by the Big 12 either because both Arizona and Colorado are being picked up by the Big 12. As we speak, maybe Utah ends up going to the Big 12 as well. You never know. But it's a lot of realignment, and I think it just needs like a voting from the board members of the Big Ten after the after this invitation of the two teams, which it looks like they're going to unanimously vote yes on it. So I guess the only reason it helps out USC is that they kind of like split the half. So like teams on this side of the country will play each other and teams on that side be more of like set in that type of division. So it'll be USC, UCLA, Nebraska most likely, Utah, or I'm sorry, Oregon, Washington and whatever other team or two that they add from the Big Ten so they play them every single year and then you play people from the other side who are farther you might have to make a trip out there on the east coast a time or two throughout the year which is probably better than what it is now but it's also kind of dumb too because Big Ten set up their schedule for like the next year or two involving USC and UCLA so I don't know how this is going to work if they're going to be accepted and the Pac-12 is already their contract is going to be up so I don't think you could just add Oregon in automatically unless they're just going to redo and reshuffle everything and add those two teams for 2024 but yeah a lot of moving pieces here a lot of things up in the air and obviously this isn't 100% done yet but it looks like it's going to be done most likely and it's going to benefit the Big Ten because you get two two of the better teams from the Pac-12 into there as well, but I don't know. It's a lot, like I said, a lot of moving parts, but we'll see what happens. A lot of news for USC football on their recruiting front. They made a lot of 2025 offers just in the past couple of days, and there's a bit of news on some of the other 2024 players as well. Jericho Johnson, one of the top. California defensive lineman in 2024. He recently put USC in his final four is what it looks like. It did not say when he's going to be committing. I'm pretty sure it's going to be somewhat soon. I don't know if he's trying to get it done before his high school year starts or in the middle or right after, but at least USC looks like they made it in the final four, but they do have a lot of usual close rival suspects with them as well, so that kind of does suck, but he wants to make the right choice, he will come to USC. All right, so let's do that, Jericho. And then there are other couple players, like in 2025 offers, a four-star linebacker, Elisha Melendez. And then a 2025 five-star cornerback, Devin Sanchez, recently put USC in his top 10. That's really good news for them to get at least in the running for one of the top cornerbacks in that class. That's good. Then they also were able to get... And offered to safety Jer- Jermichael Gillis, the number two overall prospect. I don't know which position he's playing, but Elijah Griffin, they sent him an offer. And a five-star defensive lineman, Armando Blount, they also sent an offer too. So a lot of very talented guys overall in that 2025 class, just throwing it out there with the offers and making sure they're on USC's notice and thinking about USC maybe trying to plan 
unofficial or official visits and stuff. So, yeah, I like that they're going after more of these top talented guys within, you know, Lincoln Riley's first couple of years. So definitely looking forward to see how that class shapes out both the 2024 and 2025 recruiting classes. And to finish this video off, yeah, it looks like a couple more Chargers made the top 100 NFL play players list. I was assuming Keenan Allen was going to be coming up, but I haven't seen him or Mike Williams, so maybe they just didn't really think of them that highly, which kind of sucks because they are some of the better players, especially Keenan Allen at his position. But at number 38, Khalil Mack was on there which is pretty nice. Number 32 was Justin Herbert, top quarterback. And number 30 was Derwin James, which is kind of weird because he's like considered the best safety, but he's at number 30, so I don't think he'd have the number one safety there. And then at number 21 is Austin Eckler, who's obviously one of the better, not only fantasy football players, but one of the top running backs out there in the league. So yeah, either way, it's a nice group of guys. I don't know if there's going to be any more players the top 100, but maybe the NFL players felt like they put in, what, like six or seven Chargers last year. And technically, with the addition of Kendricks, there was about like five or six around this time as well. But I think they didn't want to give them too much credit because, yeah, they did win 10 games, but they did lose in glorious fashion in that first round playoff game. But either way... Some high hopes going in there. A lot of good stuff I've been reading and seeing some highlights and stuff from practice as well. So definitely looking forward to hopefully everybody staying healthy and going into the season. And yeah, last night was the first <clears throat> Hall of Fame or whatever preseason game, which obviously kind of sucked. But I think even Bubba Bolden, who was an ex-USC player, ended that game with an interception as well. So that's pretty cool. To see, finally get some football back in our veins. I don't think there's any football games this weekend because I think it's usually the Hall of Fame game is that Thursday and then the next week is when the week one of preseason officially starts and you know college football will be here before you know it because USC is playing week zero and not week one, so they're playing a week earlier. So it's going to be here before we know it. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that. So yeah, thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.